It's a beautiful evening here in Colorado. I'm just uh, thoroughly enjoying my experience here, as you can see by my smirk. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful up here tonight. I haven't really made too many videos because I am just soaking in this beautiful area. Right now I'm up here in Taylor Park, Colorado, and I found the most epic camp spot. It's very peaceful here, and I, I'm just really enjoying it. Take a look around and soak in the privilege that I get to be able to enjoy in this area. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful out here tonight, guys and gals. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. Oh my god. What are you doing? Well, I made it to this place called Pie Plant Mills. Yeah, it's really cool old building. But there's these little uh chipmunks that are running around that are very, very curious about me. One of them got to about within three or four feet. So I'm gonna come down here. I'd sit right where I was and see if I can't get those little guys to come back and take some video of them. Vipers. Uh, guess we'll just have to wait for them. See if they'll come back. The really tricky part is trying to stay still while there are mosquitoes attacking me. What are you doing, little guy? You were just like two feet from me. You are adorable. <laughs> This is so cool. Yeah, you just saw that one just came like right up onto my foot in between my legs. Probably as curious about me as I am about them. <laughs> well, I think my, I think they're not really curious about me anymore. They all kind of just took off after making first contact, so. Does anybody know what kind of plant this is? It almost looks like millet. I mean, it looks exactly like millet, but it's, maybe this is what millet looks like when it's flowering. That's the whole reason why I came down here, actually, was because of this plant. It's so neat looking. <sighs> Man, Colorado is such a beautiful area. Except for the drone of generators in the distance. I think let's uh, mosey on out of here, out of the pie plant mill, and make our way down to Lily Lake, which I heard is a lake that is not like any other lake in the Rocky Mountains. So yeah, let's hit it. Well, I was on my way up here to Lily Pond, and then it turns out that there's a whole bunch of uh, old mining claims and ghost towns up here it's pretty amazing take a look at this isn't that neat look at that old boiler 
That's so cool. Looks like there's a shaft right there. And there was probably once a mine hole right there. Yeah, look at this. This is so cool. I love seeing stuff like this. I mean, it's unfortunate environmentally speaking, but it's it's cool seeing the history. Just the uh, rugged individuals who must have came up here in hopes of striking it rich. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty collapsed. It is just, it's not exactly the nicest day to be outside right now. <laughs> but uh, it makes me glad that at least I have a cab for my for my UTV because otherwise some of these poor individuals that are driving around without without a cab are getting completely soaked. Yeah, look at this. Look at this tailing pile we got going on here. There must have been some pretty good some pretty good uh, gold up in this area or silver or whatever it was that they were hunting for. Wow, this is so neat. All things considered, it's still a pretty beautiful day. It's a nice cozy 60, probably 60, 65 degrees out here. Just a great day to go out and do a little bit of adventuring, exploring and seeing all this amazing history we got going on here. And the views, wow. Yeah, there was definitely, definitely a lot of uh, gold to be had up here, I'm guessing, judging by how big this tailing pile is. Cool. All right, let's head back into the Can-Am here and see if we can't find this beautiful lake that I keep hearing about. Well, it looks like we made it, but we're going to have to walk a little bit to get to Lily Pond right over there. Coming out. That's kind of a cool old tree. Something tells me that tree's been hit by lightning a few times. Look at how many times it branches off. All right, we're slowly starting to make our way away from the, the forest and hopefully the ground I'm walking on doesn't start to get too soft. It's kind of looking like it, it's about to. Oof. Yeah. I might have to actually find a different route here because it's, uh, ooh. Yeah, it's getting soft. Darn it. It looks like there's actually a road right over here that I could use to get maybe closer to this, maybe closer to this lake. All right, well, let's get back to the, the UTV and make our way over. Some really beautiful vegetation around here. Almost looks like a succulent, but it's not. Hey. I'm trying to film here. Come. Good girl. Oh yeah, thanks. Wait for it. There she goes. Alright. Alright. This looks a little bit better. Zeta, you are so dirty. Guess who gets to ride in the back? Yeah, you're not riding in the cab now. Look at how dirty you are. Holy cow. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, wish I would have brought my boots. Wow. Man, this is cool. 
see if Zeta go run in that water and clean off a little bit. I don't know if that'd be clean or not. <laughs> Got deep quick, didn't it? Wow, look at this. Yep, those folks weren't kidding. This is a really cool place. I'm glad I took the little trip up here. <sighs> I wish I would have brought a more than just this camera, but this was such a spontaneous trip that uh, my phone's the only thing that I brought. But it's all good. I think you guys got a good idea of what this place looks like. It would have been really neat to set a time lapse up right back here as those clouds start to dissipate. That would be cool. Oh well. Yeah, so I think that just about does it for today's trips. Let's make our way back down to my camper, which is about 16 miles from here, and cook up some grub, because I'm pretty hungry right now. Seda, come on up. Ugh, let's see if I can do this one-handed. There you go, good girl. Whoa. Whoa. Guess you forgot to shut off his music, so just imagine this part right here. Ah, water, Psh, water crossing, epic, woo! Well, that was a lot of fun. On my way back down to my camper, I actually saw another person with a northern light, which was probably only a third one that I've seen in the entire time that I had been in, in Colorado. So after shooting the breeze and exchanging pleasantries, he invited me to go with him and his wife and this other couple that they had just met a few days prior from Minnesota, and they were going to go and do the Devil's Punch Bowl. Now, I was a bit apprehensive at first because I had heard that the Devil's Punch Bowl is actually rated as the most dangerous trail in all of Colorado because there was a unfortunate fatality, I think it was back in the 70s, where several people died all at once because they had rolled off of the side of the trail and fell into the into the devil's punch bowl and unfortunately they passed away but i'm always up for an opportunity to see another beautiful part of colorado so i hitched up my trailer and we made our way over towards crested butte where the devil's punch bowl is located at It pays to be narrow.
gonna cut left hard here in a second. I was supposed to get the footage that this nice lady to my right here had filmed of me, but unfortunately she never got that to me. So it's first person perspective for this fun little technical obstacle here, but it still looked pretty neat. correctly it's no big deal and being a little bit more narrow like I am with my 64 inch wide UTV I'm noticing that uh, things are a lot a lot easier to get through than the poor folks that have the 72s and the 74s now this is actually the scariest part of this entire trail because of the camber you end up keeping your left front and left rear high on the left side of the trail and then that actually pushes you downhill and down into the devil's punch bowl and it was not a comfortable feeling at all you can see he's actually starting to teeter a little bit right there and safely makes it out fortunately oh man this is going to be sketchy Well, that was exciting. Um, 
Unfortunately, I didn't really get much filming for the rest of the trip because we were all in a rush to get back to our campers slash trailers and not get stuck out here at night because at this point there was still another two hours left of driving. So we all just kind of made haste and made our way back. I would say that it was very unfortunate, but at this point, one of the wives was very terrified of the upcoming part, which goes around the Devil's Punch Bowl. So she got out and she ended up walking about, I would say, a half to three quarters of a mile uphill, steep, raining out slippery rocks, and she walked all the way up. She did not want to ride in, in the side-by-side -side on the way up, so... She got herself a good workout and got soaking wet, and I'm sure that the husband got his butt chewed for several days after that. But anyway, here's the following day. Wow, this is a pretty interesting find. Just rolling around up Italian Creek here, and um, I noticed a very unmistakable fungus just off the side of the road. And the name of this fungus is called An Amanita muscaria. For those of you who are not in the know as far as fungus goes, Amanita muscaria is actually a psychedelic mushroom. And legend has it that the story of Santa Claus came from the Amanita muscaria. The reindeer in the Nordic countries would actually eat the mushroom of the Amanita muscaria. And then the, the people would actually, from what I heard, would actually drink the urine of the reindeer. They also... From what I recall, I don't know how you prepare it, but there are two psychoactive chemicals in Amanita muscaria. One of them is muscalin, and then the other one is, there, I can't remember it off, off the top of my head. But the crazy thing about this mushroom is it actually has a lot of pharmaceutical properties too. Aside from it being a psychedelic, it used to be stigmatized as a venomous or a poisonous mushroom. But in recent times, the stigma has started to become less prevalent. And now people will occasionally enjoy it. <laughs> um, both for its pharmaceutical benefits and also for psychoactive benefits as well. Now, I just got out. I'm in this beautiful aspen grove right here. And looking around, I can actually see a whole bunch of other mushrooms that are edible. Right over here is a mushroom called the bolete, which I believe in Italy, when they harvested them, they're actually also called porcini. I guess I was saying it wrong. The correct way to say it is porcini. And they are kind of coveted in the in the culinary scene. It's pretty fascinating to just see how the ecology of this area is just so ripe with, with food that a lot of people wouldn't even know about. Now, the thing that you can actually help identify if it's a porcini mushroom or not is the flesh itself. On the bottom of these mushrooms are these very distinctive pores that are unlike uh, what you would normally see in your typical mushroom. There, see right there? But the problem with these mushrooms is that very often they're actually infected by bugs. So you can't eat them. Well, if you can, you're just gonna get a little bit more protein. <laughs> Now, some species of these bolete mushrooms, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, can get very, very large. Um, I've seen ones that are the size of a basketball and my dog would cut, quit knocking them over. Hey, go on, go. Um, I'll show you this one right here. This one, I've got some pretty big hands and it's the size of my hand. And this isn't even one of the biggest one I've ever found before. And here, I believe these are bolites. They're just starting to sprout up about the size of my thumb. Kind of cool, huh? They look kind of phallic in nature, but 
Eh. <laughs> Don't mo most mushrooms look like that? You know the old saying about uh, mushrooms, where you're gonna find one, you're gonna find a whole bunch more. So what I'm hoping to find are not Amanita muscaria or bolites. What I really want to find are some chanterelle mushrooms because up in Montana, the season for chanterelles is right around early to mid August, depending on the season. And chanterelle mushrooms are delicious, like very, very tasty, right up there with morel mushrooms. I've actually harvested about 14 pounds in two hours one time in this one honey hole that I've, that I've found before. It doesn't look like there's any growing around here. They're very, very easy to find when you know where to look because they are vibrantly orange, like very bright orange. So they stick out like a sore thumb. So yeah, just taking a quick traipse around here in these beautiful Colorado woods, this Aspen Grove, very pretty. A lot of cool ecology to see and experience around here. So anyway, let's make our way back to my UTV and keep on heading up the trail a little bit. Postcard beauty is not very hard to find here in Colorado. I mean, just look behind me. Looks like that's far enough for, for me today. It's already 5.15 out and I just don't want to, uh, I just don't really want to get too much farther down this trail before it gets too late. Let's uh, make our way back down the trail and I guess I'll see you when I continue the next portion of this video.